It's nine o'clock. Do you know where your children are? September 15, 1994. Tonight, a new chapter in the O.J. Simpson drama, Nicole's story. Nicole, swim me. Swim me. An astonishing video scrapbook. The voice, the face of a woman you haven't really met before. Pictures of a girl growing up. And tender moments in her life with the man now accused of her murder. I'm still excited, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to help deliver the baby. Oh, yeah, she's thinking about something real nice. She's thinking about whether her daddy's rich and her mama's good looking. A loving mother and her children. Also tonight. Glasses, and every morning I wake up and I kiss her picture and I say, Morning, Nick. Every morning. Loved ones remember. After three agonizing months, a mother, a father, a whole family break their silence. He was insanely jealous. And, but she was completely devoted to him. A haunting conversation about it all. The daughter, the sister they adored. Her childhood, her marriage, and that horrifying night. Do you want to go to him and say, did you do it? I did. From ABC News, with anchors Diane Sawyer in New York, Sam Donaldson in Washington, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace, Judd Rose, Sylvia Chase, John Quinones, and Renee Poussant, this is Prime Time. Prime Time, now from New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. Tonight, Nicole's family speaks. It is not an easy thing for them to do. We scheduled this interview three times, and twice they had to call to say it was simply too painful. But they have finally come forward with their memories and vivid home movies, because they feel the shrill media spectacle has trivialized and diminished the victims. And while the world dwells on every detail of Nicole Brown Simpson's death, the Browns cherish every minute of her life. This is a family portrait. A younger sister, Dominique. Lou Brown, a father. Judy, a mother. Denise, an older sister with a haunting resemblance. And the youngest, Tanya, age 24. They are never more than an instant from the memory of the one who is missing, Nicole. We think we already know her from the photograph we've seen so often. The high-gloss L.A. beauty, chiseled, glamorous, with a slightly wary smile. But the Nicole her family remembers is a laughing girl with a strong spirit who fell in love with a football legend, a thoughtful young woman with a lot of dreams and a very human voice. Say, I love you, Mommy. Say, I love you. I love you. Love you. Love you. Hey, P.S. Sydney. When you watch this tape when you get older, see that little quilt you're laying on? Yeah? You see it? Mommy made that for you when she was pregnant a couple weeks before you were born. You see that? Yeah! Every morning I wake up and I kiss her picture and I say, Morning, Nick. Every morning. They all called her Nick in the Laguna Beach home where the Browns now live together. Parents, daughters, grandchildren, including Nicole's children, Sydney and Justin. There's a special table in the family room for her and letters and consoling prayers of strangers. Denise Brown starts there every day. I wake up in the morning and I start the pot of coffee and I light a candle for Nicole and I sit there and I just sit there and talk to her. And it makes me feel good. How did you hear the news um, by phone Yeah, the next morning? Last June, a police call, a brutal reality after years of worrying, as parents do when the kids start to drive. Ever since my girls drive, I was always afraid of getting this phone call. And every time there was a phone call late at night, I counted the rooms. Who is home? It happened, <laughs> and I got it. A daughter murdered, 
a son-in-law accused. Do you want to go to him and say, did you do it? I did. They were standing next to her daughter's coffin. Diane, at the wake. Is that how you say it? The wake? The viewing? The viewing. In the viewing, yes. I said, um, I said, did you have anything to do with that? And he said? He said, no, I loved your daughter. The family says she was easy to love. Nicole, the second of four daughters born to Lou Brown, a Kansas army boy stationed in Germany, who married a beautiful German girl with a passion for fun and family. The girls lived near Frankfurt until Lou Brown, now in the insurance business, brought the family home to a new house in California. Dominique is the little one. Nicole, the only blonde. Denise is wearing glasses. We had this big, huge garden, an enormous big garden with a big pool, and this is where they were raised. Life was like a riotous girls' camp. With mother making the costumes, they danced, tap, ballet, you name it. Hawaiian. This time, Dominique joining Nicole. The girls did everything together, had their tonsils out together. Nicole already beautiful. Here's communion together. We always thought, oh, we're getting married when we had our veils on. Yet the family says even dancing, Nicole worked hardest to get it right. Nicole was more serious. And Denise was always one who could say, ah, it doesn't matter. And Nicole always needed to have, yes, it does matter. She was also extremely bright. She had skipped the fourth grade and entered a class for gifted children. She was a leader. If Nicole said it was okay, everybody else was okay. I know you can see me now. Here's a surprise. Soon the slightly plump, serious little girl had become a gangly homecoming princess, saying she was going to be a photographer, living like any dreamy teenage girl. She would have candles lit all over her room. She was a real romantic. Yes. Very romantic. <laughs> After high school, while making her plans, she took a job waitressing in Beverly Hills. She was a stunning 18 when she caught a customer's eye. What did you think when your 18-year-old daughter came home with O.J. Simpson? I didn't know who he was. She called me and she says, Mom, I'm coming by with a friend of mine. And I said, fine. And she says, Mama, he's a black man. I said, that's okay. I said, you come by. Did you see how she felt about him? Oh, she was totally oh. in love with him. This girl was totally in love. He was an exuberant star who expected her to look like one, too. Yet she told her family they were so close, even in a crowd, they felt alone together. Did you think he was good to her then? Yes, yes. How were they together? Strong, two very strong personalities. Strong enough that after eight years together, when she saw him on the street with another woman, she laid down the law. When you see the man that you are supposedly with arm in arm with another woman, you, oh yeah, you start yelling. But as soon as that happened, he went over there with a ring and, you know, the whole nine yards and asked her to marry him right then and there. He even so went to her I, father to ask formal permission. I found him to be very affable, very, very outgoing, very nice guy. Yeah, we learned to love him. And uh, he became part of the family. The marriage took place in 1985, a small ceremony in the backyard of Simpson's Brentwood home. A few months later, Simpson was inducted into the Football Hall of Fame. His wife, Nicole, is expecting a child in October. She didn't like to be pregnant because she got fat. She says, you know, O.J. is the only person I, that I know whose wife is not supposed to gain any weight when you're pregnant. And they were extremely happy about Sydney. The baby? Oh, yes. They were so happy. And Nicole was in heaven. And he wanted the children, too. Oh, yes. He was thrilled. Yeah, he wanted Sydney. Oh, he wanted to have a baby with Nicole. I, I feel excited. You know what I mean? Yeah. After all, and Nicole and I, we're having our first little zebra. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to help deliver the baby. His friend Al Callings is holding the video camera. 
Oh, you like your baby? The little pumpkin. The little pumpkin, the little huh? pumpkin. I don't believe that I had this baby. Oh, yeah, she's thinking about yeah. something real what nice. Thinking she's thinking about what her, her daddy's rich and her mama's good looking. Justin arrived three years later. There's the hospital, and we're going to go in this hospital and pick up Justin Ryan Simpson. Yeah. Hi. And there's mommy. Hi. And there's mommy. Hi. Are you ready to go home, mommy? I'm so ready to go home. I was just looking at the window, waiting for you guys. Oh, Look. And there's Krabby. There's Krabby. August 10th, 1988. Daddy looks pretty handsome at 41, doesn't he? Welcome home. Simpson's children from his first marriage, this is Arnell, were part of the household, too. This is his oldest son, Jason. And the whole Brown clan is very much a part of the rollicking extended family. Nicole planning the holidays they all spent together. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Vacations were together too. Here's Nicole, Dominique, and their babies. You have to understand everything in our house is a family affair. <laughs> and friends were always around who say Nicole loved decorating, cooking and not the limelight. Make the basket. No, now. That's a make make the basket for now. The family told us Simpson chided her to keep up the glamorous looks he loved. Yet as time went on, they say there were signs of strain. Nicole seemed frustrated in the marriage, smothered. They say, as always, working hard may be too hard to get it right. She says he's stressing me out. His explanation was well i've been away all week yeah i want a hundred percent of her when i'm home yeah and that would make her really tense because she was a perfectionist she wanted everything to be perfect they fought but every relationship goes up and down yeah i mean they have arguments she did tell me that he has a bad temper which we knew but uh and so did she <laughs> so did she he was insanely jealous and but she was completely devoted to him you have to realize she had to deal with a lot of other things i mean you would go someplace with oj and there'd be you know he would be the in the limelight 20 women she was always 10 feet behind really when you said insanely jealous what did you mean possessive he was yeah possessive. he was real possessive he just he, she was his he wanted her to be attractive but for him and that's as far as it went he was just very possessive of her. But did you have any sense there was trouble? Did you? Well, we heard about the 89. We knew about the 89. New Year's Eve, police found Nicole Simpson hiding outside, saying her husband threatened to kill her. Simpson pled no contest to wife beating. But Nicole implied to her mother it was her fault, too. She told us that they had a big fight. And uh, she did not know what she should do, if she should press charges. And we took a long walk, and she says, Mama, I can't ruin his whole life and his career. We just flipped out. After the incident in 89, the New Year's mm -hmm. incident, I mean, it wasn't that you were sitting at home saying, look what he did. She didn't keep going and harping on the, on the situation. I mean, it was done, and that was the end of it. See, she knew she was going to stay with O.J. She loved O.J. So she, I guess she just figured, why pull a family apart when I'm, I know I'm going to be with this man? And then he called, I can handle it. And she can and handle it. the type of person she was. <laughs> yeah. I can handle it. Very strong, very proud. And they say, very forgiving. Her husband's womanizing was no secret. Did she tell you about the infidelity, and did you say to her, get out of it? When someone's accused of infidelity, they can pretty much justify it any way they want. Yes. And yeah, that's how it went. Excuses, don't you know? And, um... When the telephone numbers on little slips of paper were in the pockets and found, and they said, well, gee, I, I, I have nothing to say about that. Uh, people stick things. Women just do it. I, I, I can't control that. Oh, it's business. Mm -hmm. When Flowers came to the house with cards on him, he says, oh, that's a business associate. You know, until she found out later that it wasn't. 
O.J. had a way with women. He had a big ego, and he talked to me about it. He says, you know, I, I just had a terrible ego, and, but I'm a better person now. And he always said, I'm really a better person now. And, uh, you know, he tells me that. He tells that to Nicole, and Nicole believes him, and I... If she wants to. She says, if I'm not happy by 1992, she says, I've got to get out and do something. She says, I'm not happy. She was losing her self-confidence and everything, and she just, she made herself a goal. That's Nicole. And she moved out. She moved out. But again, it was unhappiness about... Just, it just tired. She was just tired, because she had so... Exhausted. Yeah, she was, she was trying to put the marriage back together, the family together, how it was. <clears throat> and she says it, ta it, it takes two, basically. But you know what? what? It's said. not even this. O.J. is a very exhausting man. He repeats himself. Yeah, He's exactly. demanding wear the right clothes, have her hair right, and, you know, everything had to be perfect. And, you know, she tried and tried and tried, and, and she just exhausted herself. You know, she was 18 when she met him, and he was her daddy all along telling her what to do. I think what really happened is she grew up. On October 15th, 1992, the marriage legally ended. There's more ahead, but one thing, you may have noticed that each member of the family is wearing a small angel pin. It's for memory. The family of Ronald Goldman wears them, too. Still to come, a reconciliation and the final days. If she had fear, if she knew it was coming, and if she was afraid, because that would just be your last minute of life, you know, being afraid. When Prime Time continues. Before we resume, an important note. Since it is the eve of the trial, the Brown family wants to be extremely fair. And as you'll see, there are certain areas which some members of the family would rather not discuss in full until after a jury has decided the fate of O.J. Simpson. As for Nicole, the family says the divorce gave her her first chance since she was a teenager to stretch her wings and feel free though they say her ex-husband still loomed large and she would make intermittent attempts to reconcile. And the Brown family is angry at the tabloid coverage of her brief life as a single woman and what they feel is a twisted portrait of her as a party girl who cared only about dancing. That woman, they want you to know, did not exist. Because they're trashing Nicole, which is very really sad. They're trashing Nicole, they're trashing somebody who can't even defend herself. She can't do anything about it. Because everybody thinks they know the truth and they know yes. the story. I mean, they're stepping on a dead person. Wicked tongues. National Enquirer, front page. Someone sells a picture, obviously sells a picture of her in a hot tub. I look at things like that and I think it, nobody's ever horsed around and take stupid pictures and, you know. I, I mean, think a girl at, should be ashamed who gave this picture away. I think this is pretty bad. I think this girl should feel very bad, and I hope she hears that. She wasn't married. She was divorced. She was a single woman. She was allowed to have friends and go out. They talked about drugs. Oh, she was That's a chill. so anti-drugs. Oh, so anti amazing. Just because you stay out and go dancing doesn't mean you do drugs. Oh, you can go yeah. out and dance. <laughs> have a good time. And she it's, danced it's with funny. girls. Funny. With girls. They say that Nicole, like a lot of people, at some point may have tried drugs, but she was not a user. And was he using drugs? Were they around? That we don't know. It is an area other members of the family refused to discuss before the trial. For now, they say, they want to set the record straight on the woman who cannot speak for herself. A woman who, for the first time, was making decisions all on her own. Whether to go dancing with the girls or to a favorite neighborhood restaurant. Her family says Nicole only dated four men the whole year after her divorce. And they say Cato Kalin was not one of them. He was a good pal, a real pal, who did her shopping, who picked up kids once in a while when she needed him, a real pal. Well, he rented pal. the room in the back, the guest room. And the kids went. loved him. And everyone Primetime spoke with, friends, family, told us Nicole Simpson was first and always a mom. The kind to it gaily turned the family den into an instant sleepaway camp for neighborhood kids. Always there organizing games, a day at the movies, or a beginner's trip down a ski slope. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. Even the trademark Ferrari, they say, was not what it seemed. There were quarters in the seatbelts, army men 
stuffed someplace. There were cokes spilled everywhere because, you know, that was the car, and it just so happened to be that her station wagon was a Ferrari, you know. And then the skimpy what? clothes that she was wearing, they're fashion, aren't It's they? fashion, because the night that she was killed, they say she had an extra short, tight dress she on. She had and this dress on. Yeah. That's the last picture, and she had that dress on. After the separation, Nicole Simpson first lived here on Gretna Green Way, and then here on Bundy Drive in Brentwood, both a few blocks from her husband so he could be with the children. The family says his wild jealousy continued, but beyond that, they will not say more. Did you know of other occasions where she felt he was stalking her? Well, we can't talk about that, I don't think. He was just, he was in love with her, and... I don't know whether it was obsession or love, and she was in love with him. Nicole was never afraid that she always left the doors open. She, and until at the end. Until the end, like the rest of us, they first heard that 911 call from last October on the TV news after her death. Hearing it, they say, is almost unbearable. 9-1 emergency, Can you get again? someone over here now to 325 Gretna Green? He's back. Well, okay, what does he look like? He's O.J. Simpson. I think you know his record. For the Browns, it was a revelation, because at the time, they didn't know she'd called the police. It was presented as just another incident in this volatile 17-year relationship. Nicole again spared her mother the painful details. She did call me the following day after he broke in the door. She called me, and she says, Oh, now we had a fight last night, and he broke in the door. And I said, oh, my God, were you scared? And she says, yeah, I was scared. Are you all right she now? Brushed but it she off. never told me that mm -mm. she called the police, and then we went on to other things, and that was it again. Merry Christmas. Is this Christmas? Not only that, two months later, she and Simpson were together again for the children, Christmas 93. And I want to get this clear again. You all never saw bruises. You never saw black eyes. You never saw signs of physical abuse. No, but we also live an hour or so away. And the portrait of her as a battered wife. I don't know. We're shocked. But as we said, every family member has a different window on Nicole's life. The full story of what each knew and saw must wait until later. So must the full story about Simpson's best friend, Al Cowlings, and something he said before Nicole's death. He, was, he would defend Nicole if they ever got in arguments, things like that. I think AC was, would defend Nicole on numerous occasions. He has, he has said that he has come to her defense several times when he's straightened out O.J., whether uh, on verbal situations or thoughts or physical, we don't know, but uh, he's... Uh, he was a protector of Nicole, too. Do you say to yourself, how could we not have known? You can't put that guilt up on you. She would have done exactly what she wanted to do and how she wanted to do it. That was Nicole. So no, we can't, um, no, we can't put that guilt up on, on us. Really not. And we won't. And in their mourning, the Brown family is outraged by suggestions they were influenced by financial dependence on Simpson. Because again, Mr. Brown, he's, it's been reported everywhere that he got a dealership, a Hertz dealership, for you, which was the support of the family. <laughs> we wish. My tax returns won't, won't show that that was uh, much of a support, I'm afraid. To... Lou Brown said it was a short-term retirement job which didn't make much money. And those family vacations? He says they always paid their own airfare and meals. Hi, guys. Did you know they were trying a final reconciliation, that she was trying a final one? Yeah, they were trying. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you all pulling for it? Either way. Well, they... I thought it was nice for the children. Yeah, for the kids. Would she have been doing that if she had been a battered I... woman and threatened yeah. and terrified? You never know. Whatever the truth, whatever her private reason, Nicole Simpson did try again. The divorced couple, along with friends and the Brown family, went to Mexico. It was Easter 1994. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. But by her birthday in May, they say she had decided it wouldn't work. 
with his life, his women, his demands. She said it, it's over. Very convincingly. Yes. Yeah. I said, this time, you're really not? You're really very sure? She says, yes, I'm really sure. I said, it's your choice. That was about a week and a half, two weeks before. Two weeks before her eight-year-old daughter Sydney's dance recital on June 12, 1994. Once again, the whole family was there to cheer. They say Nicole bought a ticket for Simpson to attend, too. But by the time he arrived, the only seats left were behind the family. Afterwards, Nicole invited her parents and sisters to dinner at Mezzaluna. We all went to dinner afterwards. And was he, he was invited? Not invited? No. I, we walked to the car together, and, uh, and I said, you're not going, are you, Ojin? He said, no, I'm not going. He looked a little depressed. And he walked away, but uh, I knew because he always wanted to be part of everything. But I think why she didn't invite him, now that's only a thought, is because he didn't come to Justin's graduation. And she kept looking. She took pictures and she kept looking whether he was coming and he just never showed up. And then she says, ah, oh, he didn't come. So was there palpable tension between the two of them that night? Not on her part. But they say she did note that Simpson wouldn't speak to her. She said, she said to me, she says, he won't say, he, he wouldn't even speak to her. She says, yeah, he didn't say hello she, to she me. She says, he, he just doesn't say hello, he won't talk to me. She says, I don't understand. Why can't we say hello and still be friends? At dinner, they say, she was a happy woman, reminiscing with Denise about their childhood dancing, excited about her future as a single mom, taking the kids camping soon. And she said, maybe she'd open her own cafe. But was she going to move away to be further away from him? Yeah. No, she wanted to stay with him. She wanted to stay in the same area so the kids could, could see him, spend time with him. Justin is a daddy boy, mm -hmm. and she knows that, or she knew it, and uh, wanted him to be close by there. She was in great spirits. Oh, she was in such a good seen, mood. Best yes. we'd seen for and weeks. And she looked the best. And we walked one way to... Uh, the parking lot, and she walked off with the uh, with her children. They were going to go, going to go get some ice cream. Very happy. Uh, the way I would want to remember her. Okay. We always had a thing where, when you drive home, when you get there, you call. Mm -hmm. And so I remember she got on the phone and said, mm -hmm. "We're home." We got here. Okay, okay I love you. I love you. I love you. But you know, I think we're very lucky. Each one said, I love you. Mm -hmm. Not many people are that lucky. Those were our last words. Every I telephone heard. conversation yeah. would, would end with, I love you. I love you. Always. You left your glasses. I left my glasses. And I called. Telephone records show she placed the call to her daughter at 9.40 p.m. Judy Brown says Nicole told her a young man, a waiter named Ron, could bring the glasses over to her. They were, you know, familiar with each other because she ate there. So you what didn't you know if, it, if, they, if there was romance or what there was? I don't was. think so. I asked Sydney, have you ever heard the name Ron? She said no. And the world knows the rest. The bodies, the brutality, the bloodied glove. And inside, the young woman who loved candles so much as a young girl had them burning in the windows. Do you think O.J. Simpson killed your daughter? We can't say. You're not guilty until you're proven guilty. Can you think of anyone else who was her enemy? Anyone? She didn't have any enemies. <laughs> anyone who could have done this? Anyone? Yeah, all of a sudden we heard it was a bit, it had to do with drugs. I mean, drug come on. Deal went wrong, right? A drug deal went wrong. It's so ridiculous. So sad. I just don't, it just really gets me to think that she, her, if she had fear, if she knew it was coming, and if she was afraid. Because that would just be your last minute of life, you know, being afraid. The family that always showed up to cheer each other on was there again at the preliminary hearings. And they'll be there at the trial, too. And have you thought through how you're going to feel with one verdict or the other? 
Have you? You know, you, know, you don't want to. You don't want to think about it because if he's innocent, then you think, oh my God, this poor man had to go yeah. through all this, and you feel so bad. And then on the other hand, if he's proven guilty, you think, why? You know, I, why? Yeah. And you know, there's there's still there's hope. You know, you don't want to believe. You're you. You have this certain part of you says it can be true. We have to think that the children have lost their mother. They're in danger of losing their father. It would be a pretty sad day for them yeah. if they did. So we're hoping against hope that uh, he didn't. And we don't know. We have a justice system that's going to tell us. It will be... I think it will be hard either way. Either way. Yeah. There will be, there will be more pain, I'm sure.